Super. I can do well. I can. Uh, if you want me to speak Swedish, uh, uh, so tell me. If you need a uh, driver to translate it to uh, English, Swedish. Uh, in, in English, this is uh, from waste management to resource management. But, and uh, uh, I didn't have a, a lot of contacts with Albania, but uh, I had a lot of contacts with uh, Africa, South uh, East Asia, Croatia, Slovenia, Poland, Russia. So I guess uh, the, this, the challenges that they are about the same. Uh, I think. Uh, just a, a short uh, historical uh, review. Uh, uh, you could actually count on a well, uh, you could uh, actually uh, have an indicator on a developed society as a society where we throw more than one ton per capita uh, as uh, uh, um, household waste or business waste. That's a kind of contra, <laughs> uh, contraproductive, I mean, you, you could say, to, to development. But uh, with a, a larger economy, People tend to use their money buying uh, commodities. We don't invest very much in uh, extra education after work or uh, culture. We buy flat screens and TVs and uh, summer houses and all the things you need to maintain these things. So the, the, the history is quite uh, depressing. Uh, the trick is to uh, have the new economies to, to grow in another way. So, so Sweden is not a very good uh, model to start with. But uh, you have to be impressed. Uh, municipal officials have been keeping a record of what the households have been thrown. And if I ask uh, uh, the officials in Tirana or in Zagreb or in, in Belgio, they won't be able to show some statist statistics back to uh, 1885. Waste management is very much about control. But the challenges, they are not the same today. Uh, the idea with uh, having a municipal uh, responsibility at this time depended on, on health uh, risks. People died in cholera and, uh, epidemia and, and things like that. So we actually um, threatened the water resources in Gothenburg by uh, throwing waste like this. It was uh, the house owners, the estate owners, uh, being uh, responsible for the waste before 1885. In Poland, they had the same uh, uh, principles until last year, 2013. First, uh, in uh, July 2013, the Polish municipalities took uh, a full responsibility for their household waste, the, the so-called municipal solid waste, MSW. So, Sweden, uh, especially Gothenburg, uh, you know, in uh, northern part of Sweden and in uh, uh, rural areas, the responsibilities was actually uh, implemented in 1972. It was uh, first, uh, the last year, uh, the, the first year with, uh, with a total municipal control of household waste was 1972. Uh, I think the Swedish EPA was uh, inaugurated in 1968, 9, something like that. So, 
um, in Sweden, we had a, a quite strong uh, development uh, on the environmental side around the, that time, the end of the 60s. Uh, the apple here symbolizes the Earth. Um, too, uh, too much focus has actually been directed to the municipal solid waste because today we are not threatened by bad water. The idea of uh, uh, municipal control today is about securing the resources in the waste, but also to secure that the chemical, the, ha the, uh, the hazardous waste is controlled. Uh, you know, 1885, the, the waste was rather simple in its composition. It was ashes from uh, the heating systems. It was manual for, from horses, some papers, and things like that. Uh, so, so uh, and uh, not all areas had uh, water closets, so it was also the toilet waste from closet. But uh, if, we, if you look at just a simple product as a so mobile telephone, the weight of this one is maybe 200 grams. But the waste generated uh, in the excavating of resources and production of this one uh, results in uh, maybe 10 kilos of waste. And 10 kilos of waste doesn't seem very much, but you have to multiply it with 1 billion cell phones produced every year. And uh, the list of the components is long. So if you buy a new cell phone, you are blowing up mountains on four continents. And that is true for the fluorescent tubes here. So at least 50 components in a simple fluorescent tubes, lanthanum, erupium, Perium and so on. And these are scarce of uh, metals. As you can see uh, the, in the history, it was a kind of, of a one uh, way uh, trip uh, from uh, 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 cradle to grave, you could say. <laughs> And uh, you can see the, that the arrow from the industry is bigger than the arrow from the municipal uh, level, from the households. Uh, maybe they didn't produce uh, iPhone at that time, but I guess you understand the idea. And uh, this picture is still true for three-thirds of humanity. This is the business-as-usual situation in most countries still. In USA, they depend very much on this simple schedule. Russia, China, and in South America and Africa, this is the normal business. And uh, is the landfill a big problem? Not always. I have visited landfills in South Africa in dry areas where they don't have any leakage water. And uh, I could guess that they have a less methane production because the waste is dry. And if the waste is dry, there can be some oxygen uh, preventing uh, the, the methane generation. So the landfill is of course a, a bigger problem when uh, it's a rainy climate. Because the leakage water will sp spread uh, uh, contamination and uh, uh, 
that means I need to get rid of the green. Uh, um, the amount of, of uh, methane from that is, is, uh, is bigger than what people expect. I have seen figures that shows that 8 to 10 percent of the total uh, greenhouse gases can have uh, its origin from, from landfills. So if people are landfilling in USA and Russia and in in uh, Albania, it's a problem for us too. Uh, carbon dioxide doesn't feel uh, any difference from country to country. There are no borders for carbon dioxide, so it's a global challenge. Uh, I am oversimplifying, of course, because iron, for example, we have recycled since the Iron Age, since 3,000 uh, 3, years ago, we have been recycling iron. So there are exceptions here. And uh, for example, cellulose, we have been recycling for hundreds of years in Sweden, because we have a metal industry and we have a paper and pulp industry. So, uh, metals and uh, cellulose is, of course, uh, uh, exceptions here. But uh, if we look on the, the big volumes of municipal solid waste, uh, the, we have a change in, in Sweden that in the end of the 60s and in the 70s, we built up a capacity for thermal waste to energy using uh, uh, power, uh, uh, plants uh, from start just producing district heat and then where uh, and we added uh, turbines and generators often in the uh, 80s sometimes in the 90s and uh, in Uppsala they added power generation as late as four or five years ago so, in these plants, we produce around uh, the 80% the of the energy produced is heat and 20% is electrical power. That means uh, that we have uh, de delivering some uh, uh, value back to uh, the municipality in that sense. We could say that around 30% around of the energy used in the district heat system in Gothenburg is from waste. But that is not an argument for uh, continuing producing waste. It's just a description of the fact. In 1995, the municipalities lost some of its uh, obligations. And some of their responsibilities was transferred to the producers of waste according to the PPP principle, producers pays principle. We learned from Germany, uh, Germany uh, who introduced that system in 1993. And I, I mean, of course, the uh, uh, recycling uh, obligation. If you produce uh, packages or newsprint in Sweden, you are uh, responsible for uh, recycling that material, and there are set objectives which levels you should uh, meet in the recycling. The owners of the recycling system is the packaging and newsprint uh, industry. So, in these days, we have a lot of arrows, and uh, is there a stick here? To 
in, in old times, there was a stick in the classroom. Maybe you have lasers today, huh? The hardware. Thank you. Uh, in a, in a perfect world, we would have a flow of uh, recyclables, sorted it, and then sent back to industry in a closed loop. That would be uh, quite resource efficient. Not perfect, of course, because uh, uh, often we move around with too much of goods. Uh, for example, we, we are eating this. We have been uh, we have learned to do the same salads in the winter as in the summer, because in the winter in January we can find tomatoes and cucumbers. So we have learned to do the same food all year round. But the difference is that uh, tomatoes you see in in uh, January is much worse from an uh, environmental point of view. So, so we have lost a lot of knowledge just because there are airplanes and container carriers and things like that, big ships. And uh, anyway, the food waste is in half of Sweden today sent to biological treatment. So this is an energy plan too. This is a uh, waste uh, to energy. This is waste to energy uh, by anaerobic digestion. And uh, the result here is fumes to buses, cars, trucks, and uh, also nutrition back to agriculture. So. Uh, when you want to tackle a waste problem, you should first start with the question, could I send this waste back to agriculture? If the answer is no, your second question could be, can I send back this waste to industry? If the answer is no, you have to ask, is this a hazardous waste? If yes, you have to remove it from the system of, of uh, materials traveling around in the society. You have to direct it to special treatment. And in Sweden, if there are some waste left after these three questions, we ask, is there a energy content? If the answer is yes, we send it to the waste to energy energy plant to produce district heat. But what is introduced uh, very much today is uh, the question is, could we dematerialize the society? Is it possible to reduce the amount of goods? But I think that is a, a tricky one in uh, poor countries to, to argue about because if you have uh, a, a kind of uh, needs that are not met, I, I don't think you have the mindset to reduce. Uh, uh, their the consumptions. So that's a tricky one. Uh, uh, the EU uh, directive uh, uh, published in 2009, the new EU directive on waste, uh, states that minimization of waste is the most important issue. Uh, and uh, preparation for reuse is the second import, most important uh, action. Recycling in the middle and uh, energy recovery is the second worst method. 
Landfilling uh, should be avoided as far as possible. But I have to say that well organized, well organized and well equipped uh, landfills is really essential. So every society needs to have landfills. And I can tell you, not all countries has official, officially ex, uh, planned landfills. There are countries using kind of wild landfills because the, the government have a bigger problem than planning for waste. So there are a few countries without even controlled landfills. Uh, but I guess in Albania there are uh, a little better than that. Uh, could you give an example of what always has to go to the landfill? There are wastes that are, are, are tricky. In, in Sweden, for example, we have, we have a lot of houses built with uh, asbest. And uh, that, that is uh, something we don't uh, want to do because the, the particles from asbest, you can't throw them out from the lungs. When you've got these particles in your lungs, they are stuck there, and they will cause uh, uh, changes in the lungs. So, so we have taken away uh, asbestos from uh, brakes in cars, from construction material, and so. But we find it in old cars and in old houses, and that we remove to the landfill. We have, for example. Gravel used on the streets uh, for, for uh, to, to prevent slippery slip, slippery streets. That sand that is uh, contaminated by oil and uh, particles and things, and um, it's really difficult to make use of that sand. Um, you can't use it the next winter because it lost its properties. Because the car tires, they are grounding these uh, gravels, so they are round and not charred. So, so they, they won't do uh, work as, as uh, for, for a second wind or a third wind. And the material value is so low, so no one is working in cleaning up the gravel to use it as construction material in the body of a road, for example. That's a pity, but I'm, I'm looking at it because uh, we will build a, a cleaning plant at our a, a water cleaning plant at our uh, waste uh, landfill in uh, Tarbula, and maybe we could add a function to clean that gravel on the landfill. So the last word is not said about that, and we have also waste from. Uh, waste to energy plants. For example, in the filters, we catch uh, heavy metals and things like that. And that is um, as a fly ash to that things. So we, you could say that landfills is actually keeping a recycling and an energy recovery up because Streams of contamination from recycling and energy recovery is sent to the landfills. So you can't actually see uh, a waste uh, to energy plant work and not uh, big recycling companies without having the excess of the landfill. So in that case, in that sense, the landfills are important still. Because we are faced to materials that we can't uh, put into the waste energy and burn it. We can't burn asbestos. It won't happen anything. 900 degrees for one hour and the asbestos will be as new. <laughs> Nothing happens because 
there are no hydrocarbons in Alaska. Uh, to improve uh, the recycling, many house owners, estate owners, build beautiful garbage rooms. This could be a kind of bungalow in Hawaii, but this is a garbage room. When you open the door, classical music starts to play. Why? Because the house owner hopes that the investment in the environment will prevent people from littering, from uh, painting, graffiti on the walls, and uh, of course, reduce the cost by reducing the waste. So it's also a, a kind of business-driven development. And uh, I think that the image of the residential area is as important as the cost reduction. Because the house owners, if they have rent houses, they want the, the houses to stay because they know if there is a big, uh, 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 large exchange of uh, people moving in and out, uh, the wear on the area <coughs> will be higher, and the cost will be higher. So, so the best is uh, happy people living in the apartments for a long time. It's not unusual that these uh, environmental rooms, they are not called garbage rooms, they are called environmental rooms, uh, separate 14 different fractions. So, so it's uh, uh, quite uh, tricky to be uh, uh, living there, knowing all about materials, sorting them in the right way. So that's a uh, that's a bit special. In some other municipalities in Sweden, uh, other systems are used. For example, in Eskilstuna, they use colored bags. And uh, then you can put the colored bags into the same big recycling bin, and then they are uh, uh, separated. Uh, automatically by photo sensors. So you don't need to end up with 10 different recycling bins. Maybe you could stop with uh, maybe three. Food waste, glass, and the rest. And Sweden is actually a leading country in, in that kind of sorting technology. Uh, Swedish company have solved this kind of solution for 20 years. In Oslo, they are building a, a sorting plant uh, right now. And uh, we will follow that uh, development closely. Uh, how does Estic compare to in the sorting result? Yeah, in the recycling rate. Oh. Uh, I, I've seen the figures. Uh, if you... Is there, is there some pen? A usual is, uh, is a B. Is it control B to make it black? <laughs> Some, sometimes it works, sometimes not. No, they can talk to the thing at the end. For for the video stuff. Uh, Det är så mycket. 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 Det är så
Uh, yeah, 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 uh, I have uh, already 1989. I introduced uh, uh, something we call peak analysis. Actually, uh, I got some help uh, by uh, two colleagues from Shellman. And uh, but I think it was the first study in Sweden where we looked at the household waste and actually wanted to describe the household waste in detail. We sorted it in about 10 fractions, but today we sort it in 20 fractions. But the, the traditional result today, if you look in the waste, is that uh, uh, one third is uh, food waste, one third is uh, packaging. And one third is, uh, I write the real waste. <laughs> what is that? Uh, I, don't, I, I want to make a long story short. Uh, so we could say that two thirds of the municipal solid waste in uh, Gothenburg is uh, just because of bad motivation and bad service. And But if you look in Eskilstuna, they have, uh, if you see this uh, figure, that they have reduced the size uh, of, uh, of uh, the waste we can find in the waste bins. So it's maybe just 50%. Compared to uh, Gothenburg. So, but they still have a little like this. So, the amount is reduced, but in the residual fraction, it's about the same kind of, of, of uh, spread of, of material. So, if you have a uh, a system uh, with that uh, all, all apartments, all uh, single houses have this system. Uh, but I think I think they hope for more, actually. And uh, the difference between households and the houses is really big. Uh, if if I would like to illustrate my households in uh, Kolkov. I'm reaching that level. So it is possible in Gothenburg if you sort food waste and the packagings as the normal scheme, you could easily end up in we are throwing 200 less than 200 kilo on four people. It's easy to reach 50 kilo household waste near uh, but the total amount of uh, leftovers is the same because I'm throwing a stream of food waste and I'm throwing a, a big stream of packaging so the difference here is that I throw very much food and packaging. So I think that our our, uh, our household maybe throws uh, six hundred kilos here in total, but not very much of of uh, residual waste. So it's very much about motivation. What happened lately, you remember that the growth block went uh, up very strong. If you look at the five uh, recent year from 2008, the financial trade crisis to now. Could you just <coughs> put it down again? Yeah, oh, sorry. 
if you look on the red bar, you can see that the municipal solid waste have uh, decreased since 2008. So that uh, gives some hope. And uh, in the same time, the population have been, uh, has increased with by 5%. Uh, the gross domestic product has, be, has increased around 4%, though we had the financial crisis in 2008. So economically, we are healthier now than 2008. And uh, according to the time before the financial crisis, uh, we had a, a, a strong uh, connection between income and waste generation. So something had broken that strong uh, vari uh, co-variation. And uh, I think that is uh, technology most. You are not reading a, a paper, newspaper uh, in the morning. You are reading the uh, news uh, digitally. So the sales of newsprint have dropped strongly the last uh, 10 years. And as newsprint is a large part of the municipal solid way, we can see. No. So I don't think it means that people in Gothenburg is much more aware about uh, resources and environment. It's just a, a, a logical result of the development. So nothing really happened in the mindset, I think. Um, on the other hand, you could say that uh, reuse had increased. For example, the, 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 the trade site Blocket had a sales uh, of 20 billion crowns sales in the Gothenburg area. So, Renova has a turnover of 1 billion Swedish crowns, 1.2 billion crowns. But Blocket is 20 times bigger. But I don't think uh, second hand uh, sales and, and uh, reuse actually reduces consumption. It can also increase consumption. You can both buy new products and second hand products. So I'm not sure the boost for uh, <coughs> reuse really means that the sales is dropping. You, you can look at the car sales. Uh, you know, we have been reusing cars all the time because they are uh, expensive. But that doesn't mean that uh, the sales of new cars is, is dropping in, in any sense. So that can be, uh, uh, result in that we have two cars. One more expensive car for long rides to the mountains or to the Mediterranean, something, and then we have a small city car, maybe uh, second-hand, 10-year-old, things like that. So. I have not seen any evidence at all that we use actually reduces uh, sales of new products. If you have seen it, inform me, because I'm interested in that uh, area. Uh, it will be uh, discussed a lot in the future. So if someone of you want to do some academic work, there is a field there to, to dig in. <laughs> I, I will help as much as I can. 
uh, okay, I, I could go on uh, talking a lot uh, about food, for example. Most municipalities have uh, invested uh, heavily in foods uh, recycling. This is some pictures from the uh, pre-treatment plant we have in uh, Gamle Staden, by Holm in uh, Gothenburg. It was taken into operation 2012. Since 2011, all food is sent to digestion and the sludge from bio, uh, digestion is since 2011 also sent from the digesters to the agriculture. That means that since uh, three years the, the nutrition is used in uh, standard uh, uh, industrial agriculture. Um, I have two questions, not really related to this maybe. Well, maybe uh, the first one uh, is actually uh, these machines, like these machines, uh, who like who builds them basically. If, if we would like to, if we go to Albania and yeah. like, yeah, you need to recycle your household waste, blah, blah, blah. How, how like, okay, okay, so how do we do that? And then we say, yeah, you have to buy these machines and whatever. Uh, you could say that uh, to, to, to build that pre-treatment plant is really simply. Uh, the investment here was 50 million crowns and the capacity was 50,000 tons. So that means uh, one million per ton. And if you want to know about the machinery, it's, uh, we have here two German screw presses made by Kufferat, K-U-F-F-E-R-R-A-T-H, I think it is. Uh, but you could find other uh, uh, designs, models too. Yeah, you can see here there are small seams. So all collected food waste is pressed through 10 millimeter holes. And the waste that doesn't pass these holes is called reject. Uh, so 70 percent is fed into these tankers, these carriers, sand, and they go. So we have a no store. The store is on wheel. And then we use the free capacity in the surrounding digesters. But my second question is, like, you're talking a lot about household waste now, but yeah. previously you showed that the largest uh, waste area is from industry. So yeah. how do you get industry to actually <coughs> collaborate if they are the biggest waste source? Yeah. but the, the th the tricky thing with industry is that uh, the industry is, uh, is uh, uh, different from region to region. Uh, you could have a uh, uh, food industry, and we have no problem to, to make them accept this at all. So. so uh, food is industry, you know, they are maybe dealing with, uh, for example, in Göteborg, we have a company called Estella, producing uh, potato chips. And they just asked, could I send this material back to agriculture? So some of the food from food industry is delivered as um, uh, Animal food. So what about like? And if it's not appropriate for pigs, then it could be for digestion. But what about like yeah, like production industry? Like my question is basically like, how do you get how do you get uh, industry or people in general to actually adhere to this kind of system? Like, 
Yeah, but but the problem is that industry could be uh, very much different. It could be flooring. This is maybe PVC, maybe linoleum. I don't know. Uh, it could be metal industry, and if you are working with metals, it will be recycling for sure, because. The, the, the value of metals is, is rather high, so they will do, uh, all business want to make a better result, so, so they will lean to uh, recycling, and they are used to recycle, even in, uh, in Southeast Europe, they see the value in recycling, so they, they, uh, they, are, not, uh, they are not a challenge at all. The problem is small scale companies. Because if they work uh, in a small scale, maybe 10 staff and less, uh, they, they are, are not aware about uh, uh, the value of the material. And the value is low because they are not having the same. Uh, flow of material much. So, so it's very much about the scale. Big scale companies, they are easy to deal with. Middle sized companies, they are also easy to deal with. It's a small scale companies that, that uh, present the problem. Uh, because in a bigger company, they have different uh, knowledge backgrounds. They have uh, Constructors, they have, have a logistic competence, they have a economic competence. They know how to solve the problem. The problem is when we have a, a smaller company and maybe a little less skilled staff. Uh, I was wondering where, where do you start? Like, how do you? Manage this. I wonder if I have. This is just a picture on the digester, just to finish that. This is just a, a place where you uh, produce condition that is uh, suited for uh, methane building activities. And th these are some examples of industry uh, we talked about. Uh, uh, this is a, a steel company in the central part of Sweden. They take care of your tins, uh, metal tins. And we have uh, glass mills not far from Borås, just uh, 100 kilometers from here. We have uh, aluminium melters. We have uh, uh, here we have TSTB board in our shopping. They take care of all your uh, milk and uh, yogurt packages. You know, the uh, paper and plastic uh, combination, uh, cardboard packaging, wet cardboard. Uh, actually, I I have a colleague working at EVL in Gothenburg. And uh, this is a tool they produced uh, to help the Baltic countries. It's called the uh, WAMPS. Uh, and uh, I think WAMPS stands for Waste Management. Yeah, planning system. It's written there. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and th this is a really simple tool that is uh, very easy to implement in Albania. Uh, you only need uh, uh, a login and a password, and then you can start. And you can be create your data here and uh, map up. So uh, here. You have to describe, is the waste sorted? Is it sent to composting? Is it uh, put in a, uh, in a waste to energy plant? Or is it uh, used as fuel in a 
salmon kill uh, or is it uh, uh, put on a landfill? So if you have a baseline where 100% of the waste is sent to a landfill, then you could change the scenario. You could, together with that scenario, build a new scenario. 50% will be sent to uh, digestion and 50% to recycling, and you will end up with completely new uh, uh, emission figures. So you can change the data here, and then you see the direct effect on data, because uh, this is a simple uh, scanning of uh, using a life cycle uh, analysis kind of uh, data. So it's a, a rather simple, uh, but it works. For example, you, you, you can, uh, if you are really like a researcher, you could try to describe how much plastic is sorted, how much glass, how much is metal. So is, is there some kind of recycling going on? You can write the features of the newspaper sorted in that. And if you take that away from the 100% to landfill, you will see that even if you sort out only 10 tons of new string or office paper in this uh, city or town, you will see that data will improve immediately. It's just like your pocket calculator. So if you want, uh, uh, if, if you want me to, to send you uh, the, the model here, is. Is it And uh, this is, I think, this is from their manual, and they describe uh, how it works in, in detail. Uh, I think you can just put it all, push it all the way down to the floor. Uh, if you I, don't have to move it up and down all the time. <laughs> you, you you have to decide what you want to do. You you can see that uh, if you turn off turn turn some stream to another utility, the figure will change. If you turn a waste to compost, the figure will uh, be slightly improved. But if you turn it to uh, uh, recycling or digestion, they will improve more. So you can choose the level of ambition. And you can uh, forecast. You could, you could have a, one, uh, one set of figures describing the situation today. And then you could put in the figures you would like them to be in two years, and, and that uh, will help you in the contact with, with the politicians. Because you can say, with these small changes, the improvements in environment will be this and that. Uh, so this is what, yeah, Maybe okay. Maybe try and put uh, or open up for questions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Wait, do we have a, uh, I think the questions have stopped. Yeah, maybe just feel free to ask. Um, and you were talking in Green that you've been working with projects in uh, developing countries in Africa as well. What is your, I mean, what are the biggest challenges in countries where there are no waste management um, systems in place? What are the major challenges when you start with implementing waste management systems? Uh, I, I forgot the word in English, but in Swedish it is tålamod. Patience. Patience. You, you have to be uh, patient because first, uh, you think that you arrive to a country that works like your country, but it doesn't. It's all, uh, all, always uh, uh, different. So you have to learn a little about how 
they uh, normally make uh, decisions. So you have to understand how the decision mechanism works and who is who the actor is that is really in power. So in the first phase, you need to focus not on ways, but on how decisions are made, which instances, which persons you should uh, um, communicate with. And that takes some time. Because there is no manual on a municipality. In Sweden, there are a bit. You can call a politician. If you Google on, uh, on Marina Johansson in the council board, uh, you can find your telephone number and your email and send a mail. In some countries, they are not that transparent. You need to ask a lot of people. Uh, is this uh, Mr. X in charge? No, it's his um, um, advisor that you should call, uh, and things like that. So, so it's a bit tricky. And uh, you could also need some uh, kind of suspicious, suspicious. Why? What are your interests? Because there are. Uh, power structures in every municipality, and if you walk in there like some volunteer wanting to change, you are disrupting uh, a system that works maybe not good, but in, it works in some sense. Uh, so you need to tell people that you are not dangerous, you are not threatening their position. Maybe you want to track that position, but, but if you say that, it could be a bit risky. Maybe you want to change the political situation in the long run, but it's not a good idea to start now, because that, that, then it will be a political problem. Sorry, maybe it's my fiancé, or it's my oldest son. Jag kan inte prata nu, men jag kör till Nygård klockan sex. Bra, hej hej! Hej! Man är bekänt. Jag är en servant till min sida. Jag är en taxidriver. Så, först. L uh, learn how uh, the municipality works, how is a normal decision made, and who is the influential people uh, you need to meet. And uh, be generous. To be a ha happy person, smiling, uh, not just looking on the problem. If you want to uh, say that the waste management system is totally shit, don't start with that. Tell about the beautiful park you went through to, to meet that guy. It makes a lot of difference. So, so you need to mix bad and good uh, feedback. Um, so it's basically, in the service to direct testy, one of the first things you need to do, because in order to convince this, you need to actually measure the amount of waste, right? And then you have to map if there is informal and formal waste areas. Yeah. And that's like a yeah. So rule number one in developed countries is to have a, a scale at the land tip to uh, register, to document the volumes entering there. And uh, you will very soon understand that the leading uh, politicians may have a wrong assumption about the amounts actually entering the land. It's very usual. I have heard a lot of figures sometimes in some cities. When we check in reality, the figures were very different. Um, 
it's a risk there could be some black economy. They can present uh, figures like 50,000 ton, but in real life it could be 100,000 tons. It's about money. So we have white tons and black tons. Uh, actually, maybe you heard about Leif Gere Persson in his uh, uh, in, a, in a book, what is it called, uh, you know, uh, about his life. He, he wrote that he actually accepted the wrong race at the landfill outside Stockholm. Uh, just uh, by having, asking the guy, if you could give me a bottle of whiskey, you can put that uh, 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 chemical waste on my uh, simple uh, construction landfill. So he actually admitted uh, environmental crime in his uh, <laughs> testimony. Uh, and now he's uh, solving uh, crimes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very funny. So, so uh, in a in, uh, uh, large part of the world, this is normal. It's nothing to be shocked over, but you have to deal with it. Because if every ton is counted, and if you have to pay for every ton, the, the, there will be a fund of money that you could invest in improving the system. So having the lamp right, uh, running, getting the right amount of money, and to have a control of how that my, uh, money is used, is a very good start. But are there certain ways? Types that you should focus on, like so metal and maybe plastics and stuff, or kind of in the three units themselves. But is it like food and glass the ones you should like begin to focus on in order to get this money and get this going, or like is there a hierarchy of like if you have a, 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 a municipal solid waste here in the bottom, you are, you have valuable material in the top. It could be methods, for example. So you can work through the, this by entering a town from here, working uh, with uh, uh, the municipal solid waste. But I should say it's easier to start from here, to take away the amounts of material that is easy to recycle. I don't know what could be second. It's uh, different on different markets. It could be uh, paper and uh, office paper, for example. It could be glass, wood, things like that. Uh, and uh, so, so if, if you work from the top, you, you will see a uh, result faster because uh, you will learn about how the recycling system works if you work from the other side you, you can for example focus on uh, food waste to digestion uh, this is recycling, uh, recycling or energy wood for example could be used as a fuel. So, uh, 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 if this uh, represents the industry on the top, at least the households, uh, it could give you a lot of uh, interesting contacts if you start with the biggest companies, if there is any big companies at all. Uh, and then you will learn about logistics, uh, who are supporting the bigger companies with uh, solutions. So you could uh, uh, try to collaborate with the companies serving the biggest companies with uh, waste and recycling services I, I guess together you will be stronger than if you work on your own so 
you could adopt uh, quite different strategies. What the first thing you need to choose uh, from is if you whether you want to work with companies or households. If you work with my first job in Gasberg Borgberg was to reduce the mercury emission from the waste to energy plant in Selnas. I installed red boxes with the, uh, the uh, uh, sign uh, uh, "Hit my battery, G give me the, your battery." And uh, so, uh, if this is a, a resource, this is a hazardous waste. We can start with something hazardous, like we. Uh, waste, electronics, and electric equipment. If you take away that, you will not reduce the waste amount very much, but you will, for certain, improve the environmental output of the system if you bring that we uh, waste away. So, there are a large uh, variety of, of ways you can work. So, this is a kind of a business economy way to, to find the valuable resources. This is the environmental protection way to, to uh, tackle the problem. So, I think choose that one that, that uh, you like most because if you think it's uh, motivated to choose one thing, you can choose that one because then you have uh, your body and your soul with you and you need that. Yeah. Yes. I was thinking with the like environmental aspect here. I can imagine that when you get down in developing countries who might not necessarily have a lot of regulation about this, a common response when I'm talking about the municipality and asking like, should we put up battery bins? is something in the style of, so what? Why should we? How would you answer that type of question? The... I can understand it. I would not be upset to hear that, because it, it depends on the system. In mm -hmm. Luxembourg, we use a, a, a thermal treatment mm -hmm. without having a wet uh, cleaning system, because it was not uh, invented yet. <laughs> so, from 1972, to 1985, we used only uh, uh, electric uh, precipitators to clean the fuel gases. That meant if you threw a thermometer with mercury in the garbage and the batteries, the mercury went through the filter right through the, the chimney up in the air. 300 kilo of mercury every year. In 10 years, we reduced the mercury emission to almost zero, <laughs> listen now, the municipality took care of the collection of batteries, the producers reduced the mercury content in the product, the waste uh, to energy plant developed wet cleaning, so public, uh, public uh, action, industrial action, and cleaning action erase the problem. It's a, it's a beautiful story, but it shows that one party can't solve the problem. Several parties have been committed. So, the project you do here should have some kind of strategy to visualize which parties will take over after the project is finished and continue the work because you need to find the balancing forces. Uh, if you just leave the municipality with the, 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 the work, it won't work. So, so there has to be some auditor checking that industry and municipality is doing their job. It could be uh, 
journalist interested in, in environment or uh, ISO 14,000 auditor or some engineer uh, or something. But someone has to control and report uh, if the actors is doing what they have said they want to do. But uh, uh, I, th I think uh, very much is about lifting the knowledge. One strategy could be to send some people to uh, Germany, Denmark or Sweden. For example, you could ask the uh, mayor to visit Gothenburg. Uh, for only 6,000 crowns, he can spend eight hours in Gothenburg visiting different uh, uh, companies and actors looking at what happened uh, have happened here uh, so we have a, a collaboration in Gothenburg called Green Gothenburg and it's a business region that the uh, running that and uh, Renova was one part in starting that collaboration Gothenburg Energy for example uh, Elstrand and Development, uh, it's a city planning company, and uh, others. So we can organize uh, a program uh, for uh, the officials in that town. And I guess Netherlands and Denmark can do the same. Thank you.